In a dystopian future where life stops at 30, young citizens lawfully spend their last day by participating in a public rite that offers the chance to be renewed for another life cycle. To terminate the law violators known as runners, a master computer commands a sandman to go undercover and demolish their hideout. After joining forces with his defector friend, they discover the sinister truth behind their society's ageist policy. In a post-apocalyptic 23rd century, the vestiges of human civilization dwell in a domed metropolis, ignorant of the outside world. In this sealed and computer-governed city, the residents are free to enjoy all the pleasures of life. However, this hedonistic lifestyle comes at a price. The citizens can only live to 30 years, and then undergo the rite of carousel to have a chance to be renewed and reborn as babies. However, the defined residents who attempt to flee on their last day are tagged as runners. These people are believed to escape to a sanctuary outside the domed city. To stop these runners from escaping, elite law enforcement officers called the Sandmen are tasked with terminating them. In 2274, at the dome's nursery, the left palm of a sleeping infant holds an implanted white life clock crystal, which the computers use to keep track of the resident's ages. As people grow older, the color of their life clock changes, but when they reach 30, the life clock will begin to blink red, notifying them of their last day. Nearby, Logan 5, a sandman with a red life clock, taps on the glass to awaken the infants, calling one of them Logan 6, whom he suspects is a renewed sandman. Suddenly, his colleague Francis 7 approaches him and triggers the alarm to wake the baby. Afterwards, Logan 5 and Francis 7 take a maze car that travels through a tube to get to the arcade, where the monthly carousel event takes place. Here, people are seen to have different colored clothing, indicating their age bracket, yellow from ages 8 to 16, green from 16 to 24, and red from 24 to 30. Meanwhile, the Sandmen always wear black. While walking, Francis assumes that Sandmen are always renewed. When one is terminated, one is born. When Logan expresses his curiosity about this assumption, Francis later sees his questioning as an unlikely trait for Sandmen. Moments later, they walk with the crowd to enter the Colosseum. Shortly after, a voice calls for the Capricorn 15s, the batch of citizens who will participate in the rite. As people fill the Colosseum, a voice tells the people in white cloaks to gather around a big red lotus. Following the display of the participants' flashing life clocks, a crystal light appears above them and envelops the arena with its rays, bringing the platform to zero gravity. As the platform slowly spins, the masked 30-year-olds levitate and then explode one by one. While the crowd roars each time someone is renewed, Logan receives a notification that a runner is trying to escape. Seconds later, Logan hurries to the Great Hall and Francis immediately follows. They chase the runner across the Great Hall and eventually corner him to a balcony, where he falls off when trying to escape the shooting. Afterwards, Logan verifies the identity of the runner and learns that he underwent a face change at New Yu 483. He then takes the escapee's belongings, including the small Ankh in his hand. After Logan and Francis leave the runner, a man on a hovering transport machine sprays a toxic mist on the abandoned body, vaporizing it for proper disposal. In his lavish apartment, Logan activates the circuit to summon a lover for the night. He meets Jessica Six, who's wearing green clothes and invites her to get intimate. However, the sad woman refuses, stating she mistakenly put herself on the circuit because she's grieving for her friend, whose life ended in the carousel. Hearing this, Logan argues that her friend was renewed but Jessica insists that the carousel is a murderous ritual. After inviting her to be intimate again, Jessica rejects him and asks about his life as a Sandman. Jessica questions why running is prohibited, to which Logan responds that the carousel is her only chance if she wants to go beyond 30. Because of this question, Logan gets suspicious and points his gun at Jessica, thinking she's a runner. When the accused woman proves her youth through her life clock, Logan feels relieved and then admiringly touches her Ankh necklace. Suddenly, Francis interrupts them when he arrives with two lovers. While they are distracted, Jessica storms out of the apartment, leaving the two Sandmen to enjoy themselves. The next morning, Logan and Francis are on their way to the Sandmen headquarters. Inside the headquarters, Logan tells Francis that the runner they caught changed his face on his last day, suspecting that someone in New U-483 must have helped him. Later, when Logan surrenders the items he took from the runner, the revolving machine whirs, prompting the master computer to interrogate him about the on and sanctuary. Clueless of these words, Logan later learns that the Ankh is a key that runners use to get to their secret hiding spot outside the dome called Sanctuary. 
He also learns that there are 1,056 runners still on the loose. Confused by the huge number, Logan questions if these numbers mean that no one has really been renewed. However, instead of answering his query, the computer assigns Logan to a secret mission to locate and destroy Sanctuary under the guise of a runner. To complete his runner guise, the computer uses a retrogram procedure to make Logan's life clock blink red. However, the Sandman worries if he'll retain his years after the mission, but the computer dismisses his concern, instructing him to take the Ankh with him as he finds the Sanctuary. In his apartment, Logan summons Jessica and reveals that he's now a runner, showing her his blinking life clock and the Ankh he got from the runner he terminated the other day. Afraid that he doesn't have much time to live, Logan asks for Jessica's help, assuming she knows something about the sanctuary and the people involved. Uncertain if he can be trusted, the confused woman walks out of the apartment. In the arcade, Logan spies on Jessica. It turns out that she's a member of an underground runner group, and they plan to get rid of Logan now that he knows about the sanctuary. The man in red advises Jessica to bring the Sandman in front of the glass hand statue, where he'll be taken care of. To carry out their plan, Jessica goes to Logan's apartment and agrees to help him. She then invites him to join her at the arcade, so she can take him to the meeting spot. However, when they're in front of the revolving hand, Logan's pager notifies him of a runner in the cathedral, prompting him to leave immediately. Left with no choice, Jessica adjusts her plan and insists on going with Logan so her friends can follow him. They hop into a maze car to get to the cathedral, where the aggressive and violent cubs reside. Before getting to their destination, Jessica asks if the cubs are breeders, and he says that everyone is a breeder, but the cubs are just wilder. Jessica confesses that she wishes she knew who her mother was, which Logan finds silly. Shortly after, he asks her when she began to question the last day, but the woman claims she's never questioned it. Upon reaching the cathedral's entrance, Logan and Jessica encounter a young cub, Mary too, who ends up stealing Jessica's bracelet. When Jessica tries to run after her, Logan pulls her back, suspicious of a trap. As they walk further into the cathedral, they spot the female runner. However, they're intercepted by a crowd of cubs, led by Billy, their oldest member. Logan takes a less violent approach and mocks the leader, telling him that his time as a cub will soon expire and the others won't hesitate to dispose of him. Acting unfazed about the concerns Logan raised, Billy attacks the Sandman. However, Logan takes out his gun and shoots, scaring the cubs off. Afterwards, Logan locates the female runner who tries to convince him that her life clock is defective and that she isn't 30 yet. To assure the runner that he won't hurt her, Logan shows his blinking life clock. He then shows her the Ankh and inquires if she knows where the sanctuary is, but the scared runner is clueless. Meanwhile, Francis is nearby, also aware of the runner's location. Before leaving, Logan gives the runner blind gas, advising her to use it if someone finds her. However, after they leave, Francis catches the runner and terminates her. After hearing the fallen runner scream, Jessica admits to her group's plan of ending him back in the arcade. Seeing that he let the runner go, she's now convinced that Logan is telling the truth. Before leaving the cathedral, Jessica spots a sleeping Mary too, who suddenly awakens and returns the bracelet she stole. Afterwards, Jessica accompanies Logan, who returns to the arcade so he can get a new face at New U-483. There, they meet Holly and the Doctor, who are also members of the underground runner group. While Logan prepares for his procedure, Jessica tries to convince the Doctor that the Sandman is a true runner. However, when the Doctor receives an order to end the Sandman, he attempts to finish him off using the machine's lasers. To save Logan, Jessica disrupts the Doctor's controls, giving the trapped Sandman the opportunity to escape and put the Doctor on the tilt bed, where the lasers end his life. Suddenly, Francis arrives and confronts Logan for letting the female runner in the cathedral go. To keep his friend from derailing his secret mission, Logan knocks Francis down and runs away with Jessica, who knows the way out. They go through a small door, where they encounter other runners. However, Jessica's runner friends act defensively, as they do not trust Logan. Soon after, Holly arrives and informs the others that the doctor's been terminated through Logan's doing. To convince everyone that Logan is a legitimate runner, Jessica tells everyone that Francis, another Sandman, is guilty of the crime. Eventually, Holly confirms this, prompting the runners to let them pass through. To find their way to the sanctuary, they advise the duo to follow the pipes all the way down to reach the end of the tunnel. Before leaving, Logan tells Jessica to go back since she isn't 30 yet, but the woman insists on going with them. 
all of a sudden, the Sandmen arrive and terminate most runners. The duo manages to hide in a safe corner, but Francis sees them and attempts to shoot Jessica. Logan shoots at Francis and then runs with Jessica through the piped corridor until they reach the door leading to the sanctuary. They try to open it using Jessica's Ankh, but they accidentally drop the key in the water. When Logan hears Francis nearby, he uses the Ankh he took from the runner he terminated the day before to open the door before the Sandman can catch them. While the duo walks through a space filled with large tanks and aquariums, Francis finds Jessica's Ankh in the water and uses it to open the door. Following the instructions, Logan and Jessica descend all the way to the bottom. Francis, however, finds them and shoots the aquarium glass, flooding the whole area. Eventually, Logan and Jessica exit through a door and take an elevator up to a frozen cave, where they find thick furry blankets to keep them warm. Soon, a robot named Box appears and informs them of its mission to gather food for the city from the outside. When Logan asks about the sanctuary, the robot shows him a line of frozen runners against the wall. They then realize that people who tried to escape were kept to be processed as protein later. When the robot aims to freeze them, Logan quickly grabs his gun to terminate the robot, causing a massive cave-in. The duo flees the cave and finds the outside world, where they see the sun and feel its warmth for the first time. While Logan and Jessica venture into the woods, Francis goes through the frozen cave and witnesses the sunlight, which confuses him. After the sun goes down, the duo decides to rest beneath a tree, where they hold each other close. The next morning, as they bathe in a lake, Jessica notices that their life clocks have turned clear, prompting Logan to conclude that the life clocks have no power outside. Later that day, Jessica spots a tower, thinking it must be the sanctuary. As they head towards it, they see the ruins of what was once Washington, D.C., where they see Abraham Lincoln's gigantic statue covered with vines. Examining the face of the man, a confused Logan thinks that it must be what an old person looks like. As they explore further, they pass through a cemetery, where Logan notices that the stones have names and numbers on them. Meanwhile, Jessica reads Beloved Husband and Beloved Wife, confused about what the phrases mean. Soon, the couple enters the abandoned United States Senate chamber, where they see a cat for the first time. As they follow the animal, they meet a nameless old man, who owns all the cats in the building. Besides not having a life clock, the elder is clueless about the sanctuary and their domed city. Amazed by the old man's wrinkles and white hair, the couple is in awe to see someone his age for the first time. They also discover that he was born naturally and was raised by his parents and not in a nursery. When the old man asks to see their hands, he envies their life clocks and wishes he could trade his cat for one. So Jessica gives him a ring instead. Shortly after, Logan asks if they could stay with him for a while, and the old man welcomes them, claiming the place is for everyone. When the old man leaves them for a while, the couple gets into an argument. Jessica insists that there is a sanctuary, but Logan denies its existence, claiming it's just a place people invented to give the runners hope. Seeing the tearful Jessica, the old man tries to cheer her up by handing her a picture of who he thinks is his family. Afterwards, the old man invites Logan to examine the paintings of other old men, leaving Jessica by herself. Suddenly, Francis takes Jessica hostage to threaten Logan. Moments later, Francis pushes Jessica aside and aims his gun at Logan to terminate him once and for all. Logan asks Francis to look at his palm to distract him, but even after seeing that his life clock ceased to work in the outside world, he remains loyal to the domed city's tenants and refuses to believe Logan's lies. While the two men argue, Jessica takes the opportunity to throw his weapon away, leaving the angry Sandman to resort to physical combat. As they fight one another, Francis takes a flagpole and uses it to choke his friend, but Logan grabs the pole to strike his colleague multiple times, severely wounding him. Before Francis takes his last breath, he notices Logan's clear life clock and declares that he is renewed. Later, the old man helps them bury Francis in the cemetery. That night, Logan tells Jessica his plan to return to the city and tell everyone the truth, but she asserts that it won't change anything. Still, Logan wants to stop the unjust terminations posed as renewals, which eventually convinces Jessica. When they tell the old man their plan, he feels disappointed because the couple promised to bury him when he passes. Jessica quickly proposes the brilliant idea to take the elder with them. As they travel back, they learn more about the outside world 
through the old man's stories, including the concept of marriage, where two people who are in love stay together and raise children. The couple is fascinated by the idea and call each other beloved husband and beloved wife. The next morning, they reach the Fourth Worth Water Garden, which the couple thinks will lead them into the city. Afraid the old man might not be able to handle the arduous swim, Logan tells him to stay by the fort and await the return. They swim through a hole and find themselves back in the city. They immediately head to the arcade, where another carousel event is about to begin. To stop the rest of the crowd from entering the Colosseum, Logan calls for their attention by announcing that everyone can live beyond 30. However, even after showing his clear life clock, the crowd dismisses his ravings and proceeds to see the right of the Capricorn 29s. As she sees everyone walk away, Jessica backs Logan's claims that there really is a world beyond their dome. However, a group of Sandmen restrains them as Logan continues proclaiming that renewal is a lie. Back in the Sandmen headquarters, the master computer asks Logan if he's seen the sanctuary. While Logan sits, the computer starts a procedure called surrogation to get answers from his subconscious. However, Logan's truthful inputs are rejected by the system, which demands that he stop persisting. As the process continues and the computer is unsatisfied with the non-existence of the sanctuary, the system malfunctions from its repetitive questioning and eventually shuts down, freeing Logan. To escape, Logan takes one of the Sandman's guns and shoots the other computers. Soon, the domed city explodes, sending everyone into a full panic, each one desperate to escape the collapsing metropolis. Meanwhile, the old man is waiting outside when he suddenly sees the young people from the domed city trickle into the outside world. The young, curious citizens gather around the old man and stare at him with awe. A girl bravely touches his gray hair and wrinkled skin, inviting everyone to get closer to him. As the young people marvel at the old man, Logan and Jessica wave at him from afar. The couple smiles and hugs each other tightly, pleased that everyone is now finally free to live long, fruitful lives beyond 30. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.